Well, I want to give you a little more on his Deagle.com uh, population statistics for 2025. They, they, boy, they got a real drastic thing. Now, I'm going to give you some common sense things uh, more than I did on my other video I put out on this. Actually, well, I'm just going to kind of like play the advocate's devil. I'd say, yeah, it's going to be true, right? Now, their predictions of dropping the population to 20% of its level, what it is today in uh, the United States, by the year 2025 is not based upon a war no war okay um, now I'm gonna tell you what the deal is as far as um, you know no other angles are not going into their in their explanation and it's just basic um, you know macroeconomics and it's pretty simple but nobody mentions it too that's the other thing <laughs> nobody mentions it um, now they they say that a lot of the the numbers are being the true numbers are being hidden from the public by the government, like the employment participation rate and things and the uh creditor expansion and other things but I'm going to get into other things here like and it's going to be using pure common sense pure logic, real simple stuff, nothing really complicated, and usually my style is like that because um Sometimes they refer to common sense as business sense. And this is one of the reasons I was like one of the, usually the main guy around a very aggressive entrepreneur as their accountant. I mean, it, weren't, it wasn't so much all about the numbers. It was about just understanding the landscape. So, okay, so Deagle.com predicts this draconian reduction in the population of the United States, mainly due to exodus. Now, when you're thinking about people say leaving the United States what kind of people would leave the United States people who have the means to do so in other words the average person doesn't have the means to do that it's like say they live in a house <laughs> you know they would like what would they do I mean they'd have to sell their house right and say everybody was trying to move out of the United States what would happen or a lot of people not everybody would say there was quite a few people trying to move out of an area, say the United States, what would happen to real estate prices? Who would be the buyers if people are trying to get out? Say there's something you know wrong with the country, right? That would be a problem. The wealthy wouldn't have much of a problem getting the hell out because they got the money to do so. The thing is, here's the other thing that people aren't really telling you. When the wealthy leave, there goes the capital. It's a flight of capital out of the United States. So if the wealthy don't f no longer regard the United States as a good place to invest capital to start new business adventures, they don't want to bother with it. It's like why did it, why did the flow of capital go to China and India or Vietnam? Because they they found it a little more lucrative to go there for employment labor rates and things like that, or maybe they didn't have to deal with the EPA and as much government regulation, but the exodus of capital is really what can knock down the GDP of the United States a lot. And, you know, actually right now there's a game going on in the world, and there's like major power centers. There's like um, the Euro European Union is a major power center. Um, China is a major power center. Russia is a major power center, I think, if you would say. Japan, United States, of course. And maybe I'm, le I'm leaving out some like North African and uh, the Libya and uh, the Middle East. OPEC might be a power center, some of the BRIC nations as a group. But what happens is there's always a competition going on between people. And the winner, you know, say there's like an economic downturn. And it could even be like in a case, I'm not talking about war coming up, but say like in World War II. If you know we didn't win the war, all the capital wouldn't have went to us. It would have went to Japan and Germany. But also, there's uh, situations where you have economic competition, and everybody's grabbing for the last chairs in a merry-go-round, you know, to get the seat and be in a driver's seat. Well, you know, last man standing is where all the capital flows to. It's like in military wars and also economic wars now you know we do have a lot of underlying problems that are being hidden in the United States as far as real serious garbage that's going on I'm just using it in real simple terms but the wealthy 
would pick up and leave this country if things start getting where it's not a nice place for them to do business or even stay. And just like Jim Rogers moved out you know, many years ago to Singapore, um, you would see a lot of other established wealthy just pick up and go. Um, not like everybody. I'm not saying that. But you would see an exodus out. And once the wealthy get out, there goes the capital flow. There goes all the reinvestment, which really kills the economy because they got the money to reinvest in business, and that's what's hiring. The, that's the, the driving force behind the economy, too, right? Now, as there's an exodus, there's also a depression of land values. Now, I'm showing a map here. This is actually from, like, a, a Federal Reserve map, and it's not really related exactly to what I'm talking about, but you can draw an analogy like the color states that are kind of reddish are where property values went down. The color states where they're greenish at this time frame is where, you know, I think this is back in um, 2010 or something, where the property values went up. Now, you know, as economies build up in a country, the real estate values go up. Just as businesses move in a local area, you know, as an aggregate in the country, the property values go up but also as businesses move in an area like a state or whether it's a county or a city um, that causes property values to go up when there's more infrastructure put in there more pipelines more roadways uh, you know more grid grid lines with you know the electrical system and all that uh, property values go up um, as the area becomes developed now one problem we have in the United States is that, you know, I'm not trying to really put it down, but, you know, we've had a lot of, we haven't really been reinvesting, and this is the fault of our crappy government, in our infrastructure, like the bridgeways, the dams, the roadways, and, you know, the bridges, you can hear there's a lot of problems with the bridges, uh, the airports, the subway system, um, they haven't been reinvesting in that in the United States. Now, I think that's eventually going to really affect the overall property values um, but the thing is when the wealthy if there's ever like a, an effect where the wealthy decide this country or just not like all of them but say just a significant amount decide to pick up and leave and go somewhere else say it's like what Singapore or I don't know some place where maybe it's China maybe it's India whatever you know but you know, or Thailand, like like uh, um, Mark Farber went to, right? Um, they just, you know, they may do that. They may do that and take their money with them. Say the hell with it. And when that happens, there goes your tax base. There goes your money for infrastructure. There goes everything. <laughs> now, like I said, it even works like when there's an economic downturn. There's like a there's a um, competition for to get the capital in your area and you know a lot of things like this even like when you're looking at um on local levels it's a big sales pitch you know to try to get investors into something and once you get something rolling it just takes a life of its own right but um you could have it the ball rolling the other way and actually the united states does look like due to poor leadership for so long that it's on a decline it's like you know, maybe the next, this 21st century that we're pretty early into is probably not going to be the good century for the United States of America. It doesn't have to be that way, but uh, there's going to have to be a serious readjustment. Now, here's something else I was looking at. Um, you know, we talk about, I always talked about high oil prices or high gasoline prices. Right now, gasoline prices are very low. It's right down, you probably can't read this chart, um, 220 it's say two dollars a gallon or two twenty five a gallon average for the second quarter of twenty sixteen now in u s dollars Norway is six fifty three a gallon um Netherlands is six thirty three a gallon Sweden is five ninety four a gallon now you say well maybe that's because they got to import their oil well you know what they got the North Sea oil and are also close to Russia I mean Russia can pipe oil into them no problem they're right across on on the Baltic Sea right no problem. Look at Italy, six fifteen a gallon. Why is it? You know, it's like there's no reason why these prices can't really come to the United States. 
at one time pretty fast. Um, I think they're keeping the prices down right now as because they want to re-elect the Communist Democratic Party and Obama machine going along with... I know Obama and Hillary don't get along, but they want to keep that... The elite want to keep their communist-type candidate in power. And so, you know, one of the ways you can really knock somebody out is, like, raise the gasoline prices because it hurts everybody in the lower and middle classes and the lower classes, and everybody gets pissed off and they vote whoever's in office out. Keeping the gas prices low artificially, I think that's what's going on in the United States because, like, we're right on par with Russia. You know, Russia's a big gas station. Now, look what happened over here in the United States. We're basically, they're 215 a gallon when you're doing an exchange rate, right? and we're 215 a gallon. Even Iran is like $1.50 a gallon. I mean, God, I mean, uh, Saudi's 92 cents a gallon. You know why that is. But U.S. and Russia are right next to each other in um, equivalent in gasoline prices. And you look at Russia, that's that's their big, you know, that's what they got. You know, oil up to yin-yang, right? One of the largest... They're like in right, right neck and neck with Saudi in producing crude oil, right? Um, so, I, you know, I could tell you that we might see some serious jacked up fuel prices, you know, if there's a turnover in whatever. I mean, after this, I don't think whatever comes, whoever gets elected, I think they're just keeping this crap down to try to get Hillary elected right now. And as far as gas prices and also the market prices, market in um, equities they're trying to keep the equities high and the gasoline prices low <laughs> until she gets elected if she does if she does get elected I don't know if she is or isn't but and also you look at Italy Italy 615 a gallon now a lot of people don't realize Italy and France were the major especially Italy and that's boy that's left out of the news left and right there was Italian companies oil companies that moved into um, Libya when they overthrew Gaddafi. Oh, they leave leave Italy out all the time. It's always the big Zionist conspiracy on the YouTube, right? And I, like I said, I'm mainly Italian, right? I'm telling you the truth, man. I'm like knocking my own freaking ethnicity here, right? Um, but I'm telling you the truth. That's exactly what the deal is. It's not what the freaking YouTubers keep telling you. Actually, Italy was the main benefactor of, but why? Why the better, better benefactor of? Gaddafi getting knocked out of power. Their companies moved in there. Um, but why is the gasoline, since they're getting they're right across the street, basically, you know, right across the Mediterranean, the little pond, why are they paying six fifty fifteen a gallon for gasoline? Well, you know, it's taxed and all this other stuff. But it's that's coming to the United States, too. As a matter of fact, I think they're probably going to raise the tax on gasoline quite a bit due to the infrastructure problem with the roadways because that's how it's paid with the gasoline tax right now here's another thing um, and this is where I definitely think economic collapse is coming to the United States um, it's the, it's the uh, credit card debt and this is actually from the St. Louis Fed Federal Reserve uh, it's older research maybe going to 2010 but it's it's legit it's legit uh, yeah, you're showing a little drop off, but it's actually it's increased again. It's like this is like a little bit of an outdated chart, but just to show you how much it's increased in the last 20 years, it's went up dramatically. So people are basically paying interest to banks left and right. You know, they're paying it. You're paying hundreds of dollars of interest to banks. You know. Um, well, I mean, if they're holding eight thousand dollars of credit card debt, even if it's like I don't know, twelve percent, whatever it is, they're paying what a thousand dollars of uh, interest a year to the bank. That's an average person. It's quite a bit of money. You can do a lot with that money. Everybody in the world is paying that to the bank as far as far as people live in the United States. Now, actually, what's going on? That I don't have the chart up here. New loans are dropping off the clip cliff because just like people have no more to borrow against they're like tapped out on their borrowing power that's all that's the whole thing that's been driving the economy is credit since this supposed um inventory um excuse me this uh you know 
implosion in the economy back in 2008, 2009. Actually, the next time it's going to be like a little of a lot worse. So, you know, if it happens like that and there's a lot of social unrest and, well, the, the, the money, the people with the most money are, are going to pick up and leave, more than likely. And a lot of the people with the most money, they really aren't here. Like now, if you're a manufacturer, you're not going to really pick up and leave right away. But if you're, um, you know, an investment banker, and you don't have your your investments in bricks and mortar on his soil, you could pick up and leave right away and take all your money with you. So, and also I just want to put out here, you know, when you're looking at the history of the United States, it's been a history of exodus. <laughs> you know, it's, that's really what it was. You know, kind of forget about what the country says, you know, what it is. And, you know, you're familiar with the map. But what? how did it form? It was an exodus out of Europe. Let's get the hell out of here, <laughs> you know. Goodbye. Well, I mean, it was a little more complicated than that. There was a lot of various reasons why. But, you know, once the East Coast was started becoming settled, people boogied and went west, you know, or even went south. They went to Florida. They went up to Maine. Um, they went to Texas. They went to Louisiana Purchase. And... It's been, you know, our whole country has formed by migration. That's really what it is. So this is not, you know, you know, when you, you see the borders of a country, nothing is like set in stone like, or, you know, where it's like etched, etched on the planet where it's always going to be that way. Um, this, and I actually I think there's a big impetus by... The global elite to uh, destroy the United States power because we have this not just the Constitution but we have this Bill of Rights enshrined in law that uh, tries to protect us from the government encroaching on our individual rights and you know the elitists don't like that now I don't think this is so far-fetched to tell you the truth I think the Deagle.com's actual predictions are far-fetched but as far as a greatly reduced uh, GDP military expenditures and even population probably due to exodus I think that is legit and you know again I'll repeat I think the gasoline prices are going to start rising and get more on par with what's going on in the world I mean, you know, people say, oh, it's because the U.S. has all the gas and oil in the world. Yeah, we do, but except it's more expensive to produce than what the price is right now. And that's why pretty much all the oil uh, wells have closed and shut down. The oil rigs have shut down, right? I mean, that's reality. We're getting oil cheap because we're importing it from Saudi. If that one place, actually Saudi's on the ropes right now. As a matter of fact... They're being hurt financially. They can't even, they're having problems even f uh, funding their war with Yemen. If Saudi starts having some real problems militarily, where maybe some of their oil refineries get blowing up or something, boy, you're going to see prices of oil and gas go right through the roof. We can easily be on par with the 5 to $6 as the rest of the world. Like, again, Italy's got oil coming from Libya. Norway and Sweden, uh, they got oil coming from the North Sea oil. Um, France has oil coming from, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, Libya. UK, also North Sea oil. Also, the UK is involved in the Libyan oil. So, you know, it's not that ludicrous to think that, you know, and I, I actually, Obama, some years ago, a couple years ago, enjoy the... Um, low gas prices or your, whatever your little uh, extra money you got because of low gas prices while well, it lasts. He actually said that, something to that effect. And, uh, you know, it's like it doesn't happen in a week. It happens, you know, over a period of time. But when it happens, it's like before you know it, right? It takes a year and all of a sudden, oh, look what happened. Everything changed, oh, you know. So, and when people move out, like if you have the most influential a lot of the most influential wealthy people decide to move out of the United States because you know they see the writing on a wall and they'll see the writing on a wall way before we do or most of us do 
Um, and they have the means to move out. Nobody, nobody's really got the means to move out. I mean, you could say this, try to do it. It's not even easy to move to another state. Like, I would probably, I'm not even sure about moving permanently to Tennessee, but, you know, I definitely want to get property up there. But if I was to permanently move to Tennessee, I realize that even though that's not that far away, that would be pretty difficult to do, and it's within the same country. Now, a lot of people trying to say, get out of the United States because of problems, I oh, hang it up, man. It's just not, it ain't going to happen. The ones that are going to move out easily are the people with a lot of money. And when they leave, there is the flight of capital. It's gone. It's goodbye. And I want to actually talk a little more about that flight of capital thing because it's like I said, there's economic warfare going on, you know, between competing centers in the world, like European unions are competing center, they're competing with us. The Chinese got a center, Japan's got a center, Russia's got a center, some of the other BRIC centers and uh, nations maybe have, I know Russia's a BRIC nation too, but whatever. I mean, I think Russia's kind of its own little economic center too, because they got a lot of natural resources. But um, the United States, of course, is an economic center. But the one, if there's competition, and it's not everybody's in debt, well, everybody's in debt in the West, but when it's like musical chairs, last man standing is, you know, or the last one to get the chair and everybody else is not, you know, is left standing, when it's left standing, gets left out, you know. Um, all the capital flows to the survivor. Maybe that's the best way to put it. It's like a war of economic attrition. That's what's going on. And it's not, it shouldn't be that way, but you know what's going on. The big banks are playing this game. Um, but when you have an actual war war, like with World War II, now if the Germans and the Japanese won, all the capital would have flowed to those nations. This nation would have been dirt poor. Uh, since the United States won, and the United States wasn't really hit by the effects of the war, like there wasn't bombings going on or cities and factories, um, all the flow of capital came into this country. Now, I know it was Brenton Woods and all that, the agreement of Brenton Woods and all that, but we became like the stabilizing influence because we were the last man standing. Now, it can work in a reverse. It's like, but I, I, you know, if there's a war, I mean, God, it's going to be ridiculous. I mean, I don't even want to imagine that. I don't even want to go down on that trail, man. But the Deagle Dot predictions are based upon no war and I, I forget exactly how many years ago I think it was about four years ago or so they were predicting this is crazy to me it's I, I can't believe this shit but they were saying I think our population is like 315 million in this country roughly um, they're predicting like 67 point something million by the year 2025 about four years ago they were saying this and then they reduced that estimate to 64.9 million. Now they just reduced it again to 61.3 million. And that's mainly due to Exodus, but there's going to be a lot of problems with people, you know, not surviving because, you know, problems with food and all this other garbage. And, you know, I, I don't want to put doom. I mean, this is shit to me is coming down as pretty damn bad. Um, but I also want to tell it to you in a common sense way because. You know, people aren't looking at the angle about, you know, big money flows or how it flows around the world. And big money, it's like when a country becomes stable, um, it's like the government's not corrupt, the crime rates are low, the infrastructure gets strong, then investment moves in and then real estate values go up. When a country starts to destabilize, in other words, like let's say, let's not use that word, like crime rate goes up, um, the infrastructure is falling apart, um, there's like more corruption in the government, whether it's city, state, local, federal, whatever, and um, just less stability due to, you know, problems in society, then capital gets the hell out. And that's actually what happens in. Um, you know, even in the states, like some of the states and some of the major cities have been decaying and people have been moving out. As a matter of fact, um, 
I think one of the Wall Street investment bank firms is moving, what is it, uh, Goldman Sachs is opening an office in uh, Poland and also in Nashville, Tennessee. They're getting the hell out of more out of New York City. As a matter of fact, at one point in time, years ago, um, the corporations used to be all headquartered in New York City many years ago. Then they went right across into New Jersey, mainly into Secaucus, New Jersey. And then they went from there to Delaware. Now, I know Delaware's got specific laws to help the Fortune 500 companies and protect the corporations. But, you know, we have actually, especially under Obama, man, we've really made it kind of difficult for businesses that really want to stay in the United States due to government policies, the EPA. Um, as a matter of fact, even when they have global policies on the um, environment, um, they put them real, real strict on the United States, but they won't put them strict on China, for instance, or India, because they'll, tell you, they'll say those countries are just developing. We need to, like, let them slide for a while till they get strong enough. That's even going on from the United Nations when they're talking about, um, you know, global pollution and standards of clean air. So, obviously, they're trying to bring the United States down to a third world country, pretty much. That's why I think this deal.com prediction, I, though I can't buy into the severity of it, I think it's basically true. And it's it's right around the corner. Um, nothing's going to happen between, I don't think, between now and the election. But uh, after the election, depends on who the hell wins. It don't even matter who the hell wins, because actually, if Hillary wins, uh, they're probably still going to pull the plug on the economy anyway, because she's going to be in a driver's seat. And if Trump wins... Um, they're going to pull a plug on the economy because he has a campaign slogan, let's make America great again. And it's like they're going to throw as much mud on possible as that. But again, you know, just think about, you know, capital, where big money goes, why it goes to another country, what makes things attractive, not attractive. And, you know, also what's probably, you know, besides the equities being way overpriced right now and it should be coming down, and I know they're being held up by, you know, web bots trading with each other. The other thing that's actually going to affect the average consumer and anybody that doesn't have a lot of money, which is basically everybody, is the ordinary fuel prices are going to start going up to be more on par with what's going on in the world. And, you know, it's not like there's going to be a lack of fuel, but it's going to be expensive. So... Just want to reiterate this stuff. I think it's 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 reality. It's not. I mean, I don't really like to put this out because it's like, it's like negative. It's well, I mean, what the hell? What what can I tell you, man? I mean, I wanted to put this out because it's like it's more stuff I didn't go over on another video I did about this Deagle.com prediction, and it's not only the creditor expansion of the government and debt, you know, with looming debt default, but it's also the creditary expansion of the consumers. The consumers are tapped out. Like, if you look, and I don't have a chart up here on new debt that's being added by consumers. New debt, new debt. The existing debt is like at a ceiling, right? New debt is dropping off the freaking side of the cliff. But new debt, how everything's been fueled in a, before the whole economy was through creditor expansion, taking on more debt by the consumer, they're tapped out. That's why you're seeing real retail sales drop. And that's why I'm trying to, you know, also put more videos out on this channel that are more practical how-to videos. Because in the real world, um, most people spend a lot of money on fluff. And they can actually get by with a lot of the things that, you know, you know, they don't need the $800 iPhone or $500 iPhone and the Apple Watch. You know, I mean, it's garbage, right? Just to pick on the product. Um, you know, if you probably had that pioneer spirit like people had way back when, you'd be fine. It's not like, you know, but people got to start redirecting their energies into different things or else they're going to be screwed, you know. The major media, and I see all the fluff that's even on these... Uh, you know, these four, you know, I don't want to mention, you know, these different business, you know, rags that are out there, you know, media outlets. I mean, they're telling you stuff like, you know, how to clean your iPhone and, you know, what's, 
which is the latest Snapchat application. <laughs> Who cares, man? You don't need that kind of garbage, man. You got to get down there like the nuts and bolts, the real stuff, and then you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You know, you don't want to be living in a, a make-believe electronic world, because people like that are going to be screwed. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it because, uh, you know, it's Polk Man and whatever the hell else is out there. And, you know, a lot of this debt is probably due to garbage like that, superfluous crapola that didn't do you any good at all. Like, in other words, if you got into debt for buying some welding equipment and you're out there doing something or you got some, uh, I don't know, mechanics tools or things to help detail cars and you're out there doing something, that's a different story. But if you got into debt for buying a bunch of fluffy gee whiz games and all this other garbage well you're SOL and that's the problem that's really what the problem is so and you know what if the elite live this leave this country I say good I really don't give a shit if they do but I realize that it's gonna hurt a lot of people because it's gonna take a lot of jobs with them but you gotta remember jobs are not you know if you're going back 150 years ago you create it your own job. That's really what's going to be the solution for America. Cottage industry. You don't need to be working for these assholes. Because they don't hire anybody unless you, they're getting more out of you than they're paying you. You know what the problem is? People are too, they don't have the balls or they're too scared to uh, try to do things, uh, a job on their own. That's 90% of the problem a lot of times, too. So if you feel like, you know, you lose that fear and you get into anything, it doesn't matter what it is, cottage industry type attitude, we don't need these jerks. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, they could, they'll could leave, the property values will go down, fine, whatever, and, you know, everything will kind of fall apart in a traditional way that we you view the economy. But the underground cottage industry can stay strong as long as people have a positive attitude. And you know what I say about the elite? Good riddance. Good riddance. Go leave. I don't give a shit where you go. Because, you know, when you look at it, uh, you know, you got the parked uh, cars over here, whatever the high-end freaking cars they have. It's probably a picture from the 30s or something. You know, Packards and stuff. You know, uh, a CJ5 Jeep does the same damn thing. You know what I mean? People got the phony way of doing things, and there's the there's the practical way of doing things. You don't really need all the crap and superfluous doo doo that the wealthy have. As a matter of fact, I see a lot of times. Boy, I used to see this way back when with so many younger people. <laughs> as soon as they save up like twenty five thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars, they go buy themselves a used BMW to try to make themselves look like one of these guys, and. Uh, that is like the stupidest thing in the world. You should not focus in on what these yo-yos are about. Not in the least. As a matter of fact, some of the smartest people, now not everybody does this, it's got a lot of money, but some of them do. They'll uh, drive cars that are very low-key. They'll drive beaters that don't look like nothing. And they do that for a reason. It's That's their style. They drive cars with over 100,000 miles on them and stuff like that. Not everybody does that, but use. But even when it's somebody that has a lot of money buys these expensive cars, it's like you going out to uh, a store and buying a you know a sandwich from uh, you know a shopping center or something like that. I mean, it's like spending 10 bucks or something. It's like a pittance. You know, you don't want to be playing any kind of games. Like, look at me. That's how people get in debt. And that is, most of the time, people are in debt because they're trying to play like some kind of big deal that they're not. Just like they go on vacations left and right and they spend all their money on vacations and what do they have? Nothing, right? I mean, it's it's right in the power of our hands to turn everything around. But people start have to get off that phony baloney wagon and, uh, you know, quit worshiping these idiots. And, you know, if you get down to practical, practical things, you'll be fine cottage industry so but when these guys leave they're gonna leave with a lot of money so you just remember money is not really it's like a guys you know it's a medium of exchange um 
you know, the money, the money that we got today really has no intrinsic wealth worth to it. I mean, silver and gold does, but, you know, the money we use today doesn't have intrinsic worth. But really, what is intrinsic worth? It's like what you create. And you'd be better off just being an entrepreneur or a cottage industry individual than working for one of these bastards anyway. So keep a positive attitude. But what I'm saying is um, there is something coming up. It's going to be a pretty damn bad collapse. Collapse. It's going to be worse than 2008, 2009. But I know it's going to happen on YouTube. The drama freak channels are going to be... That's why I've been lengthy on this, because I don't want people to be too scared about it, but I just want you to understand it really is not BS. I know I've been accused of trying to, like, scare people. I am not. I am not. I just put it out to you a different way and, you know, explained it over to you a few times, you know, how capital flows out of, you know, where it's more, you know, more infrastructure, more stability, more or less corruption, more, um, uh, you know, political stability besides economic stability and you know as the United States is getting more, more politically corrupt and things like that and infrastructure is falling apart people are going to leave they're going to leave man they're leaving they're already leaving you know two examples are Mark Farber and Jim Rogers they left years ago but they saw the writing on the wall there's going to be others that are going to follow and that's just how it is